Welcome back. Another episode of That's What She'd Said. That's Rashid Wallace, the man himself. I'm Rob Perez, Worldwide Wob. Uh, a little tradition that we have started on this program is we like to lead off every show with uh, going back in time, if you will, a certain <laughs> point in Rashid Wallace's career, which we get some, uh, some insight on. And we have one of his most famous or maybe infamous, depending on what school of thought you come from, moments here, May 20th. <laughs> 2000, I usually ask Sheet if he can remember what happened on that day. And even before we get to the video, he was already on top of me here. We're going back to the Western Conference Finals when Rasheed Wallace was ejected in, uh, what was it at the time? It was, it was Staples Center. Uh, yeah. The So thankfully, the footage exists for, everyone remembers this for you getting ejected uh with just staring at someone, but there's video leading up to the events as to why whack that guy when he screams whack at you happened. Uh, could we roll uh -huh. tape and have she give us his director's cut of what transpired <laughs> on this day? Cause I've always wanted to know. Okay. So now I'm sitting here. I think if I'm not mistaken, that was either Rick Fox or Rob Horry that went to the basket phantom call. So, uh, you know, I already had a beef with them. So I don't have to say much. At this time, I didn't have to say much or, or cuss or nothing. So, you know, he gave me the tech right there. He gave me the tech. I probably, there, I probably said something, you know, probably called him an MF or SOB or, you know, something like that. Something derogatory for sure, because I knew what, I knew what he's doing in my opinion. So as the game goes on, you know, boom, this whole, this whole, uh, uh, I guess, I guess possession right here that we have, like everyone, all they doing is reaching in there and, and reaching and reaching and stabbing and grabbing. So I finally get the bucket, boom. But then it was it was nothing for me. Okay, so all I did was just look at him. He knew what he was doing. He knew what he was doing. He knew exactly what he was doing. They all knew. He got you know, as I said before, they got that email. He did, knew what he was doing. What you, you think hear, it was? It was built for us. Scream? Did you hear him scream? Whack. Whack. Yeah, I, I, I heard that. everything. Okay, and now, now, and that's when I knew I had him. Ever since then, I didn't have to say nothing to him, but I always made him feel uncomfortable. So, Sheed, you're sitting on the floor there, and you've got this, let's let's be honest, devious look on your face as you're mouthing something to him. You eventually get hit with the T, and then you, then you start laughing on the floor, like, oh, that's the one that did it. That's the one. Was it just mm -hmm. like, was it just insult after insult? Were you trying to get teed up there? Um, no, I just, I didn't have to say too much. I usually just say one or two things, but loud enough, but you hear me and you know what I'm talking about. If I make any type of reference to anything, you, you hear me, you know what I'm talking about. So no, I didn't have to say too much, but Hey, they got the agenda. What we coming from a small Portland market. Look, how would that have looked in the finals? Small ass Indiana market and a small ass Portland market in the finals. No. So during that whole course, yeah, they they tried to get us out of there, but we kept fighting and scrapping like the dogs we were. And then it all, I'm going to say it was it was the basketball gods that actually, you know what I'm saying, put that over the top because we had them. We had them. Like, like I go back, look at the tape, look at that game sometimes. All them cast days, you know, looking in the stands, saying, waving high and, you know, picture time and this and that because, you know, they the late show and, you know, Phil Jackson's over there. All of them was clocked out. Before we leave this topic, I I got to put you on the spot a little bit because you, you referred to before as the email was going around, which you just kind of gave some context to as to what you thought. But you're saying, was that email about, you thought was about the Blazers or just your de demeanor in general? Um, a little, a little bit of both. I mean, it included everything. It's, it's, it's all about money now. Come on, we know the, the league is all about money. You know, this the NBA. This is the best um, professional basketball uh, franchise on earth. So it's a billion dollar company. So, yeah, you know, they're not going to let certain things get out of hand. It's like, look, that wouldn't look good for TV ratings. You know, that probably would have been like the lowest finals ratings ever. Portland and Indiana. Now, granted. Both states, both cities are huge, fucking huge basketball fans, basketball nuts. 
You know what I'm saying? We already know the history of the state of Indiana and then many great players come from there. And then, you know, it's a lot of great basketball played out there in Northwest with Portland. And they got a lot of young stars and professionals that played out there for that franchise. So that wouldn't have been, you know, like what? Uh, that probably would have been a Nielsen rating low <laughs> and, in my book. Yeah. Last thing. When you walked over to the ref in the famous whack, you're out of here moment, what was your what was your like thought process of your intentions? Was it just to go over there and kind of stare at him and just hope he stared back? Was it just to give him? Were you trying to get it? You weren't trying to get ejected because your presence was very necessary on this no. team and in the series. What, what did you walk over there with? the? What am I going to do with this? Or was it just something that kind of came out naturally? And I've had enough of this dude. No, it was just I just wanted them to know that I was there and I knew what he was doing. My thought and my head and my head, you know how they do in the movies where they play one scene and it's like a thought, but it doesn't really happen. In my head, I wanted to kick him in his chest. But, you know, I just stood right there and because I knew what I knew what he was doing. He knew what he was doing. And and hey, it, one thing led to another. And do you have any regrets about getting ejected from that game? And the reason why I'm saying that is I'm thinking about Draymond Green in the 2016 finals in that game five ends up giving Cleveland mm -hmm. life because he gets ejected. You were ejected before the game is over. And while I think you were down at the time, uh, do you feel like by you getting ejected, y'all lost that game and as a result lost the series or that doesn't really go through your mind at all? No, that didn't really go through my mind. Again, in my opinion, they had their agenda. Uh, they had their agenda. So just think that same game. Uh, I'm sitting in the back. And I want to say probably a couple minutes later, uh, as far as game time, a couple minutes later. Boom. Who's right behind me coming out? Double ejection too. Dell Davis. Now, who was Dell Davis to us? They got out uh, the main score with me. They knew how it was. <clears throat> Excuse me. They got out the main score with me. Dell Davis was our best as far as center because back then it was the natural positions. Wasn't no point forward and all that. It was the natural position, center, power forward, and so on. So Dell played center, and he was strong enough to play against Shaq and wasn't scared to get hit with them Shaq elbows and, you know, shoulders. Get him out of here. Now what happens? Shaq goes on a rampage and through that whole and, – and that that I think that was the only game in that series where it might you could call it like a blowout.